In this video, you're gonna learn how to build a custom X402 agent that allows you to buy and sell any product that you would like to sell over the internet using X402. The way that we're gonna accomplish this is with this A2A X402 TypeScript library and example project that gives us both a client and a merchant agent to start with, and we're gonna modify that to do whatever we'd like. And in this example, we're going to sell an ebook. So we're just gonna essentially allow someone to pay one USDC, and if they pay, then they get a link to download this ebook. That is a private link. Um, now you can obviously modify this to do a lot more than that, but I think this is a good example to kind of show you how you can kind of start with something, modify it to what you would like it to be, and then put it out there and let people start using it. With X402, there's so much going on. I thought this was a pretty good um, tweet from Joyce where she highlighted a lot of the things happening in the ecosystem, Joyce from CrossMint. This is a ecosystem map with some of the stuff happening um, along with uh, a few other, you know, um, comments of people calling out things that may have been left out here, which was pretty good. Um, so this is a good place to start if you're not up to date with everything happening. Um, to kind of highlight the library that we're gonna be using, I ported over the A2A X402 um, Python library to TypeScript um, a few weeks ago. And we're gonna be kind of just using this port because I like to write TypeScript. And we've been working with Google Cloud um, with this um, whole payment standard with AP2. AP2 is kind of the, the standard that goes along with A2A. You could think of it as something like MCP along with that whole stack of different standards that allow you to do different things. AP2 is payments. And X402 is the crypto payment uh, portion of kind of like how all this is put together. Um, if you want to see all of the repos that I've put out there um, in the last few weeks on X402, you can go to GitHub slash uh, Dabit3. And I'm just showing you here's a link to the GitHub uh, gist that we're gonna be selling in this tutorial. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and start writing some code right away. So to kick things off, I'm gonna go ahead and clone this repo. All right, and here you'll see we have the client and the merchant agent. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in my text editor. Okay, with this open up in our text editor, um, the main two things that we need to set are our environment variables. So I can go ahead to the merchant agent folder and copy those over to .env and also the same with the client. All right, so now we have our .env for our client and our .env for our server. Uh, the main things that you need to set are going to be your API key for Google Gemini um, and your private key and potentially like a base Sepolia RPC URL. The merchant agent URL stays the same. Um, the facilitator URL stays the same and everything else pretty much stays the same. You just need to set your private keys, um, your maybe uh, Google API uh, key and your um, RPC endpoint. So I'm obviously not gonna do that on screen, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off screen and I'll be right back after I've set my environment variables. Okay, now that our environment variables are set, I'm gonna go into the merchant folder and run npm install. And I'm gonna do the same in the client folder. And now we should be able to test it out. So in the server, I'm gonna run npm run dev and on the client, I'm gonna run npm run web. Now for this to work, you need to have Sepolia ETH and Sepolia USDC all available free on different faucets. So I can go now to localhost 3000 and test it out as is. So I can just say, hello world. And I want to buy a pencil or something like that. and you'll see that everything is set up working with this basic example. All right, so we can basically now take our address, go to Sepolia base scan, and just make sure that the transaction actually happened. And if we go to ERC20 transfers, you'll see something happened 15 seconds ago. Okay, so we're, we're having this really basic agent working, but what we wanna do is modify this to sell our our ebook. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna obviously Bob code this. And we're gonna do this with one shot. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and open Codex because this is what I've been liking to work with lately. Um, Codex is essentially like Claude code, but it's from GPT or from uh, OpenAI, I guess you could say. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in a prompt that I will walk through and I'll also share the prompt with you if you'd like to use it. All right, so here's the prompt. I say, right now this merchant agent and client agent facilitates the sale of arbitrary items, but I'd like to modify this to instead facilitate the sale of my developer relations ebook located at this GitHub gist. And then I add additional context about the things I'd like it to kind of do specifically. Again, I'll share this prompt in just a moment. So what we'd like to do is go ahead and hit run, and then this should make all the updates and we should be able to test this out. So we'll give this a few uh, seconds to run. Okay, it looks like our LLM and our Vibe Coding Assistant has completed the task. So let's go ahead and test it out and see if everything is working. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart both the server and the client on the web. We'll go ahead and open up localhost 3000 and we'll just start by saying hello world. And we're given the information about the developer relations ebook. And I can say, I'm interested. The cost is one USDC. I'll just say, yes, I want to buy it or something like that. And boom, we get the merchant confirm, confirm the payments. Here's the secure download for our book. So we should be able to click that. And we see the book is there. And then we can also maybe open the link to view our transaction that happened 17 seconds ago. So everything worked. And I guess the whole lesson here is that you can start with kind of a working example and you can vibe code your way into whatever you would like fairly quickly, right? If we wanted to kind of like modify this by hand, it would have taken us quite a bit longer. So I think starting with these example boilerplates that just work out of the box, allow you to kind of rapidly iterate. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna link to a couple of other videos below about how you can extend this, maybe deploy it to Eigen if you uh, are interested in that. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks for checking this out.